Okay, I do not understand why hardly anybody is talking about this backpack. I mean, it might be the fact that it has a really unique design. It's got to be the weirdest, most unique ugh, design of backpack I've ever seen. <laughs> I nearly fell there. I've ever seen in my life. It's a very, very unique ultralight backpack. But despite the fact it's got quite a few quirks, it has fast become my favorite backpack of all time. And in this video, I'm gonna talk. Whew. And in this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of the pack, show you some of its features in more detail, talk about the pros and cons, and then finally tell you, well, who I think this backpack is for. Right, superhero landing. <laughs> Nailed it. But I'm gonna start by removing this because this doesn't actually come with the pack. This is an optional extra that you can add on, which is really good for storing up to two liter bottle of water or a really good place to store your hazelnuts. All right, here's the pack. And the first thing you might notice is this thing has got a ton of storage up front. 750 mil bottle can go in here. 750 mil can go, bottle can go in here. You've got another 600 mils of storage here and here. So that's what, only three and a half liters of storage right on the front of this pack. It's got a little zip pocket in here, which is big enough to fit your phone in. And you've got one of those on the other side as well. And um, when I was hiking, I used that to keep my, my wallet in. You'll notice in the front here, unlike a lot of packs, Instead of a waist strap, this has got three sternum straps. And this is because this pack doesn't come from, I don't know, backpacking heritage. or <laughs> This comes from a background of trail running. It's more designed for trail running packs. And trail running packs, unlike normal backpacks, they're not designed to put the weight just on your shoulders. They're not designed to put the weight around your waist on your hips. They're designed to hug you like a friendly monkey of a bag backpack and distribute the weight over your entire torso. So if you look, you can see my arms are very, very free because of that. The shape of it, it comes around the front. I don't really have got like full motion of my arms so I could climb with this on um, and there's nothing around my waist. That means, as I said, I got a lot of free motion. I can also run with it on. And the other thing that lets me run with it on is the fit. This thing is very, very comfy. Um, you can cinch it down in the sides using like nylon webbing straps, which hold it tightly, or you can loosen those and then have it tightened up with these shock cords, which means when you run, there's a little bit of flex and it moves with your body. It weighs just under a kilo and it's made from very, very robust, I think like three layer diamond nylon ripstop fabric. So it's a tough, tough bag. Oh no, I'm losing my hazelnuts. No, my I need these for another project. This is the add-on pouch that you can get for this. That gives you a little bit of extra storage on the front. Now this is designed to carry, as I said, a two liter bottle of water, but it's also got a sleeve in the front like that. So you can stick your phone in there. You can stick a snack in there. Uh, when I used it in the West Highland Way, I had a power bank in there charging my phone and you got some straps on there. You can tighten that up. So useful little addition if you want to carry a little bit of extra weight and you can put this on this way and you can also turn it and mount it on that way as well right so let's go over the outside of it first of all and you'll notice that on the side it's got these compression straps that tighten everything up so no matter how much you've got on the inside of it you can tighten it up so it's always rigid always solid so it doesn't have side pockets the way a more traditional backpack would do it's got this big stretch mesh on the front here the lid is removable it is a little bit fiddly to remove this there isn't there aren't clips you have to actually undo the webbing from the buckle this is great content Stephen hiding behind a bag I'll take that off and i'll show you that separate here we've got the lid on top of it there's another stretch mesh now i did find on its own this is a little bit risky because this can open up and stuff can fall so i've added a little safety pin on there to sort of make the opening on it smaller so stuff doesn't fall out and you can get a lot more in this than you would think on the top here i've got one two three four five five dehydrated hiking meals in the top of that when it's on the west highland way i used that space in the top to store my drone because then i was able to get at it nice and quickly and then in the bottom of the lid you have another stretch mesh pouch which is perfect for storing more of your hazelnuts. Oh no. Mm. 
the squirrel can have those. This main compartment on the bottom here, that's 28 liters, so nearly 30. And this roll top on the top is the additional 12 liters. So that's where you get your 40 liters from in total. But that makes this bag incredibly flexible because you don't have to put anything in this roll top. You can just close it down and mix it a smaller pack. And then you can just use this main compartment. And the straps on the side here mean that you can quite effectively have as little as maybe 15 liters of kit inside this. And it'll still start tighten up without everything rattling around. In the top here, I've got I've got a compressed down sleeping bag in its dry bag. On the back here, there's this zip. You open that up and you've got a big pouch in the back so you can put hydration bladder right down the back of this pack and a huge one as well. It's massive for the back of it. The back of this has got this nice kind of mesh. I don't know if it's supposed to provide airflow. I'm not really don't really think it does, but it does mean it is very comfortable against your back. And my favorite feature about this bag is that to open this, you can zip and open this flap on the front and get instant access to absolutely everything on the pack. This is amazing. So many ultralight packs use like a roll top system where you stuff everything in, roll the top, and if you wanna get at everything, you have to dig down in with this. 30 liters of storage in the back that I have instant access to. This bag did me for nearly a week on the West Highland Way. And if you need to carry extra bits and pieces, the outside of the bag has got a ton of loops and places where you can attach and put stuff on, including on the bottom here. So let's talk the pros and the cons of this bag. Uh, let's go through the cons first of all. Number one, this is not a waterproof bag. It is weather resistant, not waterproof. If it rains continually, the water will eventually get in. So if you've got stuff that needs to stay bone dry, you will have to put it inside additional dry bags. It is a complicated bag to take on and off, especially if you get the optional um, the optional front storage pouch because you've got woo, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clips to take off before you can take off the bag. Now, that's sort of offset by the fact that you can have so much stuff up front in this you won't need to take it off as much as you would a normal backpack. At just under a kilo, this is heavier than other ultra light backpacks because you can get ones that are as light as like 300 grams, 500 grams. But I guess that's balanced out by the flexibility and the robustness of this and also an extra little bit of comfort. If you want the absolute lightest ultra light bag possible, eh, might not be what you're after. It can take a little bit of getting used to. First day and the first trip that I went out wearing this pack, it felt odd, to be honest, for a few hours until I got used to it. So you just have to be aware of that if you've never used this kind of bag before. Probably the most annoying quirk with this bag is that you have to balance the stuff that's in it. If you don't put enough stuff in the compartment on the bottom here, and then you have lots of stuff on the top or in the lid, the top of it can kind of flop over because there isn't quite the rigidity in this bottom section and um, you have to make sure you pack the main compartment as tightly as possible and then tighten up those side straps on it as well and make sure you don't overpack the roll top it is expensive it costs around 250 pounds and there are a lot of really good backpacks you could get for the same money or even less one final problem i had with this backpack was quality control the roll top on this originally had a bit of velcro that held it in place until you rolled it. It wasn't properly stitched on, and after the second time I used it, the Velcro, it ripped off the other side, and that's just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Now, this wasn't actually that much of an inconvenience because it wasn't that useful anyway, but it does concern me a little bit when a product this expensive has got any kind of quality control problems. I've already mentioned a lot of these, but let's talk about the good points, and probably the biggest good point for me is the comfort of this pack. This is, beyond doubt, the most comfortable backpack I've ever used. Slight caveat, up to a weight of around 10 kilograms. I think if you have any more than 10, than 10 kilograms in this, it's gonna maybe start getting a little bit awkward, a little bit uncomfortable. As I said earlier, I don't feel any pressure points. It's just like a, a hug, the way it distributes the weight. After six days on the West Highland Way, I didn't have really painful shoulders. I didn't have an achy waist. I find quite often with, with, with waist straps, sometimes if it overlaps where your belt does on your trousers or your shorts or whatever it is, it can kind of pinch your waist and eventually you get sore where, where it's kind of gripping you. This didn't happen. I didn't get that at all. I did get fatigued and I had like a general ache overall, but I didn't get any pressure points where this felt really, really uncomfortable. Um, and that for me is the biggest difference over other lightweight packs that I've tried. Because other lightweight packs, 
that I've tried tend to have quite light and thin straps. So you can get a lot in them, but then they put all that pressure directly onto your shoulders and the waist strap on them often doesn't offset it that much either. But even at that, I much prefer not having the waist strap. I much prefer having my arms free, being able to run if I want to, being able to climb if I want to. This pack makes me feel like I have a lot more freedom. Probably my favorite feature of this pack that I mentioned earlier is the massive easy access compartment on the front and this has made me resent every other backpack I have where I have to go digging around for all of my stuff. Uh, hi, it's Stephen on the stump. Stop. Right, so who do I think this backpack is for? Well, I guess it's perfect for people I guess, like me who want to be able to do a combination of different types of stuff. I suppose where this backpack stops becoming useful for me is when you get into the colder weather and you've got to carry a lot more kit with you. Or if I just want to go and do a camp where I don't want to use a tiny stove, I want to carry something bigger, maybe have a frying pan with me and cook proper food. Well, I might not get all my kit into this, but there is just something about this backpack that much like my barefoot, my barefoot boots, as I've mentioned before, that just using it and going on trips with it brings me joy. I don't know if that's just because the size, the smaller size of it means I have to force myself to carry less kit. Therefore, I feel less restrained when I'm out, which is a lot more enjoyable. Or if it's just the fact that it's so comfortable and I, I never get to the point. When I go out hiking with other backpacks, always at some point, I resent the backpack. I hate my really big winter backpack, my 70 liter pack. From about half an hour after going, it starts to hurt my shoulders, it starts to pinch at my waist, it squashes my belt against my skin, I end up with a red mark where the, I'm being compressed. I just don't get that with this pack. Like as I said earlier, it is like a hug. It's like your warm little outdoor friend that wraps itself around you and welcomes you outside. So yeah, I absolutely love it. It may or may not suit you, but hopefully this video will help you make that decision. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you on the next video. Now oh, I've got sap all over myself.